Samantha. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me <clears throat> in tonight's um, Michael's class. This is Chris Williams and I'm here to share a project with you that we can paint together in just about an hour. We're going to paint rustic roses on a very small little six by six surface and it's going to be a real fun project. So if you have your six by six canvas ready and the first thing you're going to want to do if you have not yet already done so is to put the pattern on your canvas. Um, the pattern was a free downloadable that you could find um, in the supply list on the Michaels website. It wasn't there if you signed up in the very beginning, but it got added later. So this is what the printout looks like. And I'll tell you what I usually do is I'll take that printout and then I usually like to make a, a line art tracing on tracing paper so that I can see through it and position it where I want it on the surface that I'm going to paint on. And once I have it where I want it, you can use like a blue painter's tape to tape it in place. And then what you're going to do is use an artist carbon paper that is called gray graphite or transfer paper. There's a right and a wrong side to that. And I usually put the dark side down, which is the business side. So I'm going to lift up my pattern and position this down underneath then I use a stylist tool, which is like a um, uh, same thing as like maybe a dead ballpoint pen if you don't have a stylist. And then you're going to transfer the design lines. With this particular pattern, I think the key lines to transfer is the shape of your base. And you might want to even grab a ruler if you haven't done so already, because you want to make sure that these vertical lines are nice and straight. So you can even use a ruler and run your um, either dead ballpoint pen or your stylist along that line there. Do the same thing on the opposite side, the little curved line at the bottom of the base. And you might even give yourself the, hor uh, the horizon, horizon line or the table line. When you're thinking about the flowers and the leaves and all the other composition here, I did not transfer the little fern leaves. I also, did not transfer every single little petal stroke inside the roses. If you wanna give yourself a placement of your three flowers, just kind of give yourself that general ball shape, that circular shape there for each of the roses. And you can or cannot, it doesn't matter, transfer the shape of your larger leaves if you like to. So when all was said and done and I set mine aside, I'll, I'll raise the uh, canvas of mine up to the, um, detail camera here so that you can see I just kind of transferred like I said all the areas that I did and just for the sake for beginners tonight I did go ahead and transfer the shape of the larger leaves but you can see that I did not do any of the little fern leaves that are coming out from the pattern. You can do this on just about any kind of a six by six surface. This actually is a piece of wood that is um, an art minds piece that you can also do at Michael's. This art minds um, little tag here is just a simple square little piece of wood. And that's kind of what I had painted mine on. Tonight I'm gonna paint it on a six by six canvas that is a gallery wrapped canvas. So you can paint it on just about any size small surface um, that is a, about six by six. Tonight we're going to use the folk art matte acrylics, and that is the original formula of folk art. It's a water-based, non-toxic paint, and the two colors that I want us to start with is your white, and it could be either wicker white or titanium white. So let's go ahead and squeeze a little bit of white out on the palette. And then I'm also going to use a color that is linen. Linen is a very um, beautiful neutral color almost kind of like a bisque or a clay um, putty almost color or very light putty color. We're gonna use these two colors to kind of create this whole background shape. I wanna make sure you still see that together here. We're gonna create the whole area, not painting on the flowers or on the vase, but all of this background area. And well, I'm gonna use a large three, and go ahead. Chris, we do have some questions about um, linen and if you don't have it, um, is there a way that you could make linen? Thank you for that, color? Stephen. And, and everyone, we have Stephen White here with me helping tonight to moderate. So that was Stephen 
um, passing along that question. If you do not have lemon, um, a good color to mix that with would be a, a good neutral brown. You, if on the supply list was bark brown, you could even take bark brown with a little bit of white. You could even add a little bit of the cinnamon to that to kind of get just a small uh, closeness to this. You probably won't get exact, but it's just a very pale, pale, light brown color. Um, there's probably more white to it than there is brown. I hope that makes sense to y'all. So what you're gonna do, if you're mixing that color up, go ahead and mix some of that. Um, and again, like I said, there's more white than there is brown. So start out with a white puddle and add just tiny, tiny little bits of brown at, at the time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load my flat brush. Again, I said, I'm starting out with a three quarter inch flat brush. <clears throat> And I'm gonna stroke into the side of the puddle of the white and the side of the puddle of the linen. Linen is just a good basic neutral color. And I'm gonna show you on my brush here. I have both the white and the linen on my brush. And I'm gonna do what I love to do. Many of you have taken classes with me before, have already learned this. You're probably pros at it by now, but I'm gonna teach you a technique that I call slip slap. It is commonly referred to as slip slap. And you're gonna put your brush down in one direction and then you're gonna flip the brush over in the other direction. So you're slipping and you're slapping. You're not sweeping the brush. Sometimes people call this slip slap, but this is not slip slap. You are slipping and you're slapping. Overlap those strokes. And I have a little bit more linen here than I have the white. So I'm gonna go pick up a little bit more white you want a brush stroke that is kind of like a modeled effect. You don't want it all putty or that linen color. You don't want it all white. You want a good mixture of the two. And you do want to see those brush marks. If you are working on a gallery wrapped canvas or another surface that has a wide edge to it, you can go ahead now and uh, transfer the same technique over onto the edges. But for time's sake today, you may want to wait and do those edges after class. So we're gonna just go ahead for now using the white and the linen, and I am slipping and slapping all the way around my design. We do so Chris, want a nice, yes. If we don't have cinnamon, what could we mix to make it? Um, cinnamon is, let's see. Cinnamon is, let me pull, I'll pull, squeeze some out on the palette right now. And also this, what this size brush are you using? Three quarter inch flat. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh, thank you, Stephen. Okay, cinnamon is uh, very much like a raw sienna, but it has a little bit more of a brown tone to it. It's not quite a yellow ochre. It's darker than that. It's more like a raw sienna. So take a yellow ochre, which you probably have, darken it a little bit with brown and then darken it a little bit more. It is a golden brown color, but it is not, it's more on the gold side than it is on the brown side. I hope that makes sense too. All right, when we get down to the bottom here, remember I told you, you can put that uh, table line or that horizon line there. We're not really doing a landscape, but that table line, you can paint over that. Maybe you might still be able to see through it and carefully come along the bottom of your vase. And again, we're just slipping and slapping that color on just to kind of get a nice, fresh, modeled look. You don't want it to be real heavy. You don't want it to be real dark. You do want to see some brush stroke marks and lightly blended, not heavily blended. Okay, I'm gonna hold mine up so you can see the top of mine. It is very uh, modeled. Some areas are dark, some areas are light. You can see some of my brush marks. And I'm just now going to go ahead and stop with that. I'm going to pick up my hair dryer and I'm going to dry mine. So if you've got yours to this point, go ahead and dry yours as well.
Did any other questions come in, Stephen, while we were drawing? Um, just one about uh, if we were mixing white with linen, but uh, I went ahead and answered for them. Yes, thank you. So let me, while you all, some of you might still be painting your background, let's go ahead and talk about what I did. And I'll refresh for you. We squeezed a little bit of the white out onto our palette and the white could be wicker white and or it could be titanium white. And then I'm using a very soft uh, color that's a good basic neutral, uh, a very, very pale khaki. It could be almost like a little putty. When you think about putty that you use to fill holes on walls, it's kind of a putty color. It's called linen. And if you don't have the linen, we mixed a little bit of brown into the white, a little bit at a time until you got a really nice neutral, uh, very pale khaki color. So I used the white um, and I'm using the titanium white tonight. I used white and that linen and I loaded both colors on my flat brush. And then I applied them to the canvas by slipping in one direction slapping in the other direction, slipping and slapping and overlapping that color all the way around the whole design. I did not paint over my flowers, didn't paint over any of the leaves or the vase. I kind of left that free of color. And I didn't take the time now to do the edges or the sides of my uh, canvas. I'll wait and do that later. I want to get on to the rest of the project. So once you have your background kind of slipped and slapped and your uh, Please, it's pleasing to you, go ahead and clean out your brush and set your brush aside because we're now going to pick up a smaller flat brush. We're not gonna use the three quarter inch flat brush. I had a number 12 on our supply list. So if you have a 10 or a 12, the area that we're gonna move on to next is going to be our vase. And this primarily is that cinnamon color plus linen. So if you were mixing the cinnamon color, again, you might start with a yellow ochre. Most people have yellow ochre or raw sienna. Raw sienna is a little bit darker than the yellow ochre. So start with the yellow ochre, add a little brown to it to get more towards a yellow um, or raw sienna. And then you might add just a little bit more brown. And as I said, don't go too heavy with the brown. It's more golden than it is brown, okay? So we're going to now use our linen color, which was um, the darker color on our background. Plus we're gonna use that cinnamon color and we're gonna use this um, number 10 or number 12 flat brush. And we're gonna use that to paint in this vase area, but I'm going to slip and slap again because when I'm showing you this up close, it's very modeled. There is like a texture on this base. You don't want the, this base painted smoothly. So I'm filling that flat brush. Again, this is my smaller flat brush, half with the linen and half with the uh, cinnamon color. And I'm going to now go into the body of my base and I'm going to slip and slap and I'm going to let that color kind of get modeled. And if you did transfer the shape of your leaves, I did because um, and normally I probably wouldn't. I'd probably paint my leaves on top of this later. But for the sake of anyone that's in the class that's a beginner this evening, I thought it might be easier if my leaves were already on there showing you what you can do, too. And you're just going to kind of keep patting that color on. And do pat with some irregular brush marks. You want to have a little bit of texture on this vase. If you have transferred the little markings of our crock here, this is actually a stoneware crock. If you have transferred these blue lines, you can leave them and paint around them. If you did not transfer them, then paint your whole vase in solid. Either way is a okay. I transferred mine, but I'm going to go ahead and paint over them. And again, just keep picking up a little bit of both colors. Again, if you have the paints, I'm working with linen and I'm working with cinnamon. And just kind of create a little bit of a modeled effect, just like our background. This is all done by just simply loading the brush and stroking it in several different directions using that slip slap technique. 
Chris, when you get to a good stopping point, can you show yeah. a, a close up of what you've done so far? Sure. Let me move this way. There we go. You can see I did have my patterns transferred, my lines transferred for the blue lines, but you can see too on that vase, the parts that I have painted so far, it's very brush marky. It is not well blended. It is very, very textured. And that's what we want. So I just constantly keep picking up half of the, each of those two colors on my flat brush. And I just kind of keep patting that color on using both sides of the brush. When you're painting those vertical sides, make sure that you keep them nice and straight. And I'm gonna put a little bit more texture in here. Okay, and let me show you one more time. This is not well blended. You can see some of the dark areas. You can see the areas where there is um, some of the linen, some of the areas where there is the cinnamon, which is the darker of the two colors. And that is great. So let, we're gonna let that dry. And then what we'll do towards the end is we'll come back and put a little bit more cinnamon at the top of our crock around the areas that hang over it, which would be our leaves and our, our roses. We're gonna let this part dry. And once you get this part on, you can go ahead and let it dry. Or if you wanna hit it with your hair dryer and clean out your brush, that would work well. I'm gonna hit mine with the hair dryer real quick. Okay, I don't normally paint often with a round brush, but tonight we're gonna to use a round brush and we're gonna use the round brush to create our three roses. This technique of painting roses, the way I'm gonna teach you tonight is often used in watercolor effects when you are painting with watercolors. So we're kind of combining acrylic paint techniques and watercolor paint techniques tonight. Although I'm not really giving you a watercolor effect because it's still, um, it's not very transparent. I should say it's still very opaque, but we are using some of those techniques as far as brush strokes. So let's go ahead and get three more colors out onto our palette. And these will be the colors that we're gonna to use to paint our roses. So the colors I'm going to use is daffodil yellow. It's a bright sunshiny yellow. If you don't have daffodil yellow, just get out a bright sunshiny yellow. I'm gonna also add pure orange to my palette. And that is just what it sounds like. It's a bright orange color. And the last color I'm going to add for our roses is actually a bright red. And this is apple red. So we have a bright yellow. Oh, go ahead. While we're talking about colors, um, here's a question. Can I use parchment with the cinnamon since I don't have linen? Yes, parchment with the cinnamon would be okay, yes. Parchment is a little bit lighter than linen, um, but you can still use it most definitely. Yours will just have a little bit of a lighter effect than, than the linen. So let me review again, the colors that I added for our roses is yellow, a bright yellow. I added daffodil yellow. I uh, added a bright orange and this is pure orange and a bright Christmassy red. And this is called apple red. So those are the three colors that we're gonna work with. And we're gonna use a round brush. And I'm trying to guess whether you all are at the same point as I am, if you have your backgrounds on and if you have your vase done. When we look at our three roses here, I want you to look at <clears throat> here for just a moment. You can see the center of each of these roses is in three different areas. This rose right here, our upper right hand top rose, the center is almost to the top or to the edge of our canvas. So it looks like a rose that's looking out in this direction. The canvas, I'm sorry, the rose that's to the left in the center here on the left, the center is not 
quite all the way to the top like this one is, but it's not in the dead center of the rose either. So this rose gives the appearance as though it's pointing in this direction. Can you all see that? And then the third rose here in the lower um, of the three roses, but still in the center, the center of that rose is almost dead center to our circle. So it's a rose that's looking straight up at you. I'm gonna pull that up so you all can see. So the thing that I want you to understand is that each rose is not facing in the same direction. And we will paint one rose at a time. So we'll just, we're gonna start with this rose way up here, the upper uh, right hand rose that's almost running off the edge. So we're gonna start with this one. And again, the three colors we're working with is the yellow, the orange, and the red. And we're gonna use a round brush. And I'm gonna wet my brush first blot it on the paper towel, and I'm going to load that brush with just by dipping the tip of my round brush into the red. For every single one of these roses and for this stroke, I want you to think about the letter C. So when you think about a C, you're thinking of a C that looks like that, right? Or a C, if it's in reverse, can look like that, right? So all of these roses are simply made by using this direction or this direction. They're all C's. And if you think about adding pressure, so that was all done using the very tip of the round brush. If I start up on the tip, it's gonna make a very thin line. And if I apply pressure, it's gonna make a wider point. And then if I, go back up and release that pressure, I'm gonna be back up on a, a thin. So it's went from thin, thick, thin. So when we do these strokes, I'm gonna pull out some more red and I do have water in my brush. All of these strokes are going to be um, thin, thick, thin. You can even practice on your little palette here if you want. Thin, thick, thin. Now we're going to start in the dead center, but as we come out the outside edges and we start adding strokes, the strokes are going to be slightly overlapped and they're just going to be a matter of starting on the very tip of the brush, applying pressure. You're still working on that C stroke and then releasing that pressure. So you can kind of see, I'm going to pull mine up here when you look at these, you can kind of see, especially on this rose right here, see how it starts in the center and it's kind of like a spiral coming out from the center. Every single little stroke is at that C stroke. They all start skinny on the point of the brush. They all have some pressure that gives you the widest part of that brush or petal, I should say. And then they end back up skinny again. So. If I look at my pattern here, if I can help you this way too, we're gonna to start here, we're gonna work on this one. We're starting here in the center and I, we're gonna do just tiny little C strokes. But if you want to practice, go ahead and practice on here too. We're starting up thin, we're applying some pressure and then we're ending back up thin again. So if it helps you do a couple strokes here on your pattern that you printed out and that will help teach you how to go light, apply pressure, and then lift. Okay, so Chris. it's Yeah. So can you show what you're doing right now uh, up close? Yeah, sure can. I thought this one might be easy just to kind of share. Let me turn it this way. Share if you wanted to practice on the paper. Now this is way above where I can see, so I don't know if I'm going to be exact, but my tip of my brush is starting on the tip of the, I'm going to work on this petal right here. So I'm starting here on the very tip, I'm pulling a little bit, and then I'm gonna start pushing down on the pressure, applying pressure to my surface. I'm gonna release that pressure and pull back up so that I'm back up on the tip again. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I what, hope size, so. what size brush are you using? This is a round brush and on the supply list, I said you could use either a six or an eight. Uh, I couldn't find mine tonight, I actually have a 10. So I have a little bit bigger brush with me tonight than what um, I suggested. Okay, so I want you to, if it helps, get your pattern out 
do a few strokes on the bigger petals on the outside, just to kind of get the feel of the stroke. We're gonna start here in the center of the flower, this part right here, which we haven't done yet. And the center of a rose is always gonna be your darker area. And then we kind of get lighter as we go out from the center. So I'm starting with my red as the darker of my three rose colors. This rose up here, remember our center, like you see on the pattern here, you see right here, we're gonna, if it helps, we're gonna make a little dot right, right there. I'm gonna make a little dot so that you'll know kind of where that center is going to be. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to think about our C strokes. So we are going to do using just the very tip of the brush and the red, I'm gonna do a little C stroke. I'm holding it up so you can see. Then I've got another little C stroke in the opposite direction. And every little C stroke is going to be a little bit different, longer overlapping strokes. I'm gonna show you real close. So I've made all little C strokes for the center of the rows. Now I'm going to start picking up some of my orange. I want just a little bit of moisture in the brush. I did not clean out my brush. I did not clean out the red. We're gonna let these colors kind of overlap and blend. And the last row or so that I did that was just the red, I'm gonna overstroke that with some of the orange. Start introducing that color into this rose. And what we wanna do is using, as we get further out, each stroke is going to slightly overlap the, uh, the next one. And I'm going to apply some pressure, start making our strokes a little bit bigger. So they're all a matter of C strokes, but they all are slightly overlapping and slightly different. <clears throat> Just do a couple rows of the orange. <clears throat> and now what we're going to do, because we don't, we, this rose here has a lot of yellow in it. I'm gonna start introducing some of that yellow. And I did not clean out my brush. My brush still might have some red in it. It definitely still has some of the pure orange in it. I'm now stroking into our puddle of our yellow, which is daffodil yellow. And we're gonna start again on the tip of the brush and I'm applying pressure and then releasing to make it thin. So there's one yellow right now. So it kind of blends from a yellow, an orange, and then to a red in the center or going from the center outwards, we have red in the center to the orange. And now we're gonna be stroking some orange, um, some yellow with this. And this still has a little bit of orange in our brush. So there's a real easy color transition as we move out further. Go back and pick up some orange every now and then, pick up some yellow every now and then. These strokes are definitely getting a little bit bigger and wider. We want some of these strokes to overlap. In other words, when I say overlap, I'm thinking like this tail right here is not stopping and starting at the same position every single stroke. So my next stroke, I'm going to overlap. I'm going to start here and I'm gonna overlap and it's gonna come a little bit further beyond. Does that make sense for y'all? I'm gonna keep getting a little bit more yellow and wider strokes. It's just a matter of you learning the pressure and the technique of this stroke. The one bad thing about Zoom classes is I can't see your work. I can't see what you're doing right now to try and help you if you're not quite understanding the stroke, but it's something that's very easily done. It's just a matter of learning that practice. And that's why I was suggesting that maybe you use that paper to practice those strokes on their paper.
How's everyone coming? I hope you're doing okay. I'll give you good, another Chris. minute. Yeah, okay, if you good. could just keep bringing the canvas up um, every so often. Unfortunately, we can't zoom in on the Zoom platform. I know, that's terrible, isn't it? The word Zoom, you would think that you could zoom in, but unfortunately, we cannot. Okay, the next rose we'll do is the one that is the next one below that which is the full center of the rose right in the middle of that. So we'll start again. I didn't clean my brush. I might get a little more, more moisture in my brush. So just dip it into some water. I'm gonna start with the red again in my center. And I am going to make sure that I still have a good full load of red paint. And again, I'm using apple red. It's a bright Christmassy red color. And we're gonna start here in that center again. So if it helps you to kind of put like a little dot uh, in the center of that rose where you want your center to be, go ahead and put a little red dot there using the tip of your brush. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do little tiny C's. I, I, I did almost like parentheses, a regular C and then a reverse C like parentheses on there. <clears throat> now I might do the same thing again at the top and the bottom of this center. So I kind of started with our dot and then I'm using the letter C, like think about stroking like a letter C. Now I'm gonna quickly stop with the red and I'm gonna pick up some of our orange. And we're gonna do that same stroke again where we're gonna start on the tip of the brush for a very skinny point, apply a little pressure and then come back up on the tip again. And because I still have a lot of red in my brush, having picked up the orange, I'm not seeing a tremendous amount of orange now, but it's a really nice color shift of change from the bright red to the center to the orange. And I'm gonna start again and stop. And start again and apply pressure and stop. So you can kind of see that we're starting to build our second rows. So we'll just keep adding a few more strokes with using this red orange color. And then we'll start picking up more orange. So you can wipe the red out of your brush onto your paper towel. and then pick up just enough of the pure orange to get more orange in there. Do a couple orange strokes and then wipe the brush on your paper towel. And what we're gonna do now is go to our yellow again. So as we build this rose out from our center, we're gonna now start working in some of the yellow. So we'll get some yellow mixed in with our orange. This type of rose can be done with any amount of colors. I just thought this color combination, we called it rustic roses. This to me was a very pretty color combination to try out tonight. And I just kept making some C strokes applying pressure in the middle of the stroke. If you want to add more yellow to yours, then stroke over some of your orange. If you want to add more orange, add more orange. Stroke over a little bit of orange on top of some of these yellow strokes. You can overlap the colors to kind of blend them a little bit. I just wouldn't carry the red too far out because we want that towards our center of our rose. And it's okay to leave some space between some of your petals. You wanna have a little bit of breathing room 
between some of the petals. And once you get the hang of this stroke of learning the pressure of when to start and stop, you can actually paint several roses very, very quickly. I'll give you a second and then we're gonna talk about the last rose. And again, remember the center of our last rose, which we would, is the rose on the left-hand side, it's maybe three quarters of the way up from the bottom of our rose up. So it's not quite at the tip and it's not exactly in the center, but we're gonna do the same technique again, starting out with some red. Now this rose has a lot more red and orange in it and less of the yellow. So we're gonna get a little bit more intense in this one. So again, if it helps you, go ahead and start with a little dot. And remember those tiny little strokes in the center that are like little C's that are wrapping around your dot. This is all done with this very small tip of the round brush. I'm gonna start picking up some of the orange. So we have a lot of red orange in this rose. I'm gonna show you up close. I've done the simple little strokes in the middle. Then I started adding the orange with the fatter strokes. And I'm going to just keep working that around. Again, starting with on the tip of the round brush, ending on the tip of the round brush, applying pressure in the middle. There's a couple more strokes I just added. So depending upon how big a petal you want is how much pressure you might put on that brush in the middle of that stroke. So this one again has more orange and red so you can keep picking up a little bit more color as you go on. I just added another stroke or another petal on mine. And the gaps that you see in there are good. Don't be trying to fill them in because then you'll kind of lose some of the shape of each of those petals. I just added another one. So just keep adding a little bit more red, a little bit more yellow until you get the shape that you want, until you get the rose coloring that you want. I think I'll start adding a little bit of yellow on mine now because I'm kind of coming down towards the bottom of the rose. It's all the same stroke. We're starting on the tip, we're ending on the tip. We're just applying pressure in the center and we're not overlapping our strokes. I mean, we are overlapping. We're, the points aren't all matching in other words. I think I'll put a one more stroke here. We've got some leaves in here, so I'm not gonna worry too much. And that's what my roses look like. Now, if you are doing something like a gallery wrap, like I am, if you, this rose that's at the top, if you wanted to carry it over the sides, you surely can, but your sides could also all just be painted the same as our background color there. And I think that would be fine as well. Let's go ahead and clean our brush out once you get your roses painted. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some colors out onto my palette now that we will use to paint our leaves. And the colors I'm gonna add right now are classic green. It's a basic middle value green. If you don't have classic green, just a basic green color. We even have a folk art color called green. That would work as well. Just a middle value green. Then we want a really bright uh, green, and this is lime green that I'm adding. It's not quite a citrus green, but it is um, a bright green. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of blue. The blue I'm using tonight is the ultramarine, or brilliant ultramarine, or ultramarine blue. So we have 
the classic green, which is a good basic middle value green. We have a yellowy green color that is called lime green. And then we have a basic blue that's like a cobalt blue and it's called ultramarine blue or brilliant ultramarine. And we're gonna work on the larger leaves first. And this is still gonna be done with the round brush and we're gonna do the darker one first. So when I look at each of my leaves, there is a dark side and then there's a light side of each leaf. And we're gonna start here at the base and we're gonna stroke up towards the tip. So we're, let's go ahead and do all of our dark sections first. Then we'll come back and do the other half of the leaf, which is our lighter section. So to get this darker color, I'm going to stroke into our basic green color, which is the classic green. I'm pulling some of that classic green out from my puddle. I'm using that same round brush and I'm gonna dip into a little bit of that blue and we're gonna bring some blue into that green. So this is um, either cobalt blue or ultramarine blue, and you can see how it has toned that color down. So what we're gonna do now with this really pretty blue-green color, if you, let's see, oh, let me do it this way. We, let's, here's our leaf shape. Uh, Steve, there is, were you gonna say something? Yeah, there is a question about the roses. Um, okay. Uh, Nancy noticed that, uh, that your sample looks much lighter and she asked if you were going to lighten them or maybe highlight them uh, later on. No, actually in life, I don't know what it looks like on camera. On life, uh, they're exactly the same. It's the same color palette. I did not lighten them. I left all the gaps or the spaces between. There's no highlighting. Did you put it's a varnish just, on it? I do have a varnish on it. Maybe that's it. Yeah, I'm willing to bet that's what it is. Yeah. It's still all the red, orange, and yellow that we, we painted our roses with, but there might be a sheen on here. That's probably what you're seeing. There's a, I can see the gloss now. So that's probably what you're seeing. If I, if I hold it so that you don't see the gloss and the sheen, that, that probably looks more like the colors that you have at home. Okay, sorry about that if it was confusing. Okay, so what I was saying is on our larger leaves here, we're going to pretend that one side is dark and one side is light. We're not painting a realistic rose. We're not painting a realistic leaf. So with this blue-green color, we're gonna start here at the base of the leaf and we're gonna apply pressure and just stroke up to the tip. And that's all we're gonna do. Then we'll come back on the other half and create a lighter value color. So. Anywhere where you have your darker leaves, the bigger leaves, start at the base and just make half of a stroke out. You can even use a little bit of water if you want to make that kind of flow. So it's a touch and apply pressure and then pull up to the tip. And we're gonna do this everywhere where we have a dark leaf. And you may even have to paint over part of your um, rose. If, there's one right here. So again, it's the gr classic green and I mixed a little bit of my blue with it. And so we have a dark blue green color. We're starting at the base of each of our leaves and we're stroking out towards the center. And I am painting just the large leaves on the dark side right now. And when you look at your pattern, you have three down here that kind of flow on top of the base and you have two up at the top here, kind of foot loose. And I think I did put, kind of fill in a little bit as though the leaf was back in here. So I'm gonna fill that in a little bit. And I'm gonna bring the darkness also in here where the rose is and pull that out. Okay. So what I did, because these leaves are kind of like back behind these roses in this area and this area, I brought that dark color in there up next to the roses. Now what I'm gonna do is um, not really rinse my brush. I'm gonna just wipe that color out and I am going to use our same base color green, which is the classic green. I'm gonna stroke up into the lime green 
And I'm gonna add just a little bit of white too. So I'm gonna stroke up and bring some of my white over. So we're making a much lighter value green. And we're gonna take the brush and we are going to do the reverse of that stroke. And it's okay to have a space or a gap. Let me show you on my finished sample. It's okay to have a space or a gap like there is between our rose petals. There can be between the strokes of these leaves as well. So we're gonna start here at the base of this leaf, applying pressure and stroking up towards that tip. And if you want more white in your stroke at kind of like we did our roses, you can kind of eat, customize each leaf to the color that you want. And there's one right there. So you can add more white, you can add uh, less white, add more of your base green, which is the classic green. And so you just wanna fill those in, have some lime green strokes. This is where this um, round brush, using the pressure of the round brush, it fills in the stroke pretty quickly. I'm gonna add a little bit more in this one. I wanna cover up more. There we go. And you can see how fast all three of those leaves were quickly, quickly painted. We're now going to use our lime green to paint in lime green and a little bit of classic green, kind of equally mixing both of those using the tip of your round brush still. And we're gonna paint just a long skinny stem, just this long skinny line everywhere where you have like a little fern plant. So you may want to have a little bit of water in your brush to have some moisture so that the paint will flow. You're only using the very tip of your brush. And we're going to just paint we're using the tips. So that means you have to have your brush straight up and down and you're just gonna use light pressure and draw a little line. So I'm just going to go ahead and begin on mine. And I've got from like the base of our rose here, I've got one coming out this way. And I have a second one right here coming out from almost the same spot, but coming out towards the side. These little fern strokes that are stems that you're uh, painting in now are not straight soldiers. You can see there's a really pretty graceful curve to them. So there's two coming out from that side and there's one coming out from this side. And then there's two up at the top. All right, still working with our round brush. We're gonna take a little bit of this base green color, which again is the classic green. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my cinnamon over and bring it over. We're gonna to tone this down and make it a duller green. So I'm adding a little bit of the brown to this, kind of almost like a little olive green color. So when you look at this fern, one half of the fern is light, the other half of the fern is dark. All of these little strokes are stroked from the tip towards our stem line. So we're gonna go like here, I'm gonna make this darker so you can see it. Here was our stem line. We're stroking towards that stem line. We are not pulling out, we are stroking in. So with the kind of dulled down green that we just made, that brown green color, we're gonna go ahead on the dark side and just touch, pull, touch, pull, touch, pull. Can you see what I just did? I'm just touching and pulling towards the stem. Touch, pull, touch, pull, touch, pull, touch, pull. I'm not worrying about exact little strokes and I'm gonna go ahead and do all the dark strokes first. So here's two of them that I did, all the little dark ones. 
and do the rest of them on the other two little stems. It's just a matter of touching and lifting and pressure, making sure that your brush is fully loaded. You want a fair amount of paint in there. And it moves along very quickly also, just touching and pulling. Now what I'm going to do is create the lighter half of our uh, little fern, and that is done with our lime green. And we're going to add some white to it. So it's lime green and our white. And I'm just kind of brush mixing a little puddle here. And I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to stroke in towards our stem with this mixture of the light green. And Chris, can you say you that have, mixture again one more time? Yes, it is lime green plus wicker white or titanium white, whichever white you have. And so when you stroke these on, again, it's the same motion where the tip of the brush is just touching the canvas and you're stroking by adding just a little bit of pressure and then pulling and lifting. And when you get out to the tip, of that little stem, go ahead and give yourself a little tiny leaf out at the tip as well. And there we go. Now, what I'd like to do next is let's go ahead and move back to our vase. And what we wanna do is put a little bit more darkness on the vase here around the leaves that we've now painted. So I'm going to use that number 10 or number 12 flat brush. And I'm gonna side load into our puddle of the cinnamon color that we use. Cinnamon and the uh, linen, or in some case, I think people were using parchment too, is what you slip slapped on here. Cinnamon being the darker of the two colors. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna take the side of the brush that has the cinnamon in it, and you can see I'm just kind of patting that color on right at the top of the vase around these leaves and around that rose. And I'm just patting that color on. I want a little bit of darkness here at the top of our vase. And that is again, the cinnamon color. And I am just using that uh, smaller flat brush, not the three quarter inch. This is my number 10 or number 12. And I'm patting that color on. Just gives us a little bit more shadow on the top there. And then this same color is what we used for our table line here. So if you still have your table line or you can see your table line through here, you're gonna side load that brush. Again, the small flat brush, and we are using the cinnamon. And you just want to hold your piece so that you can really see that, that table line straight. Give yourself a little bit of a table line on both sides of your vase while you're still working with that color in your brush. If you can't see that line, get your ruler back out again. It's, it's not a problem to use a ruler and make sure that your lines are straight there. Another artist tool that's perfect for this sort of thing is a T-square. If you have a T-square, get that T-square out. You wanna make sure that your table line is straight on both sides of your little vase here. Then what we're gonna do while we still have that color is we're gonna come and shade or deepen a little bit of that table color underneath the base of that vase. So again, it's still working with the number 10 or 12 flat brush. And I'm working by side loading that brush with a little bit of the cinnamon. And I'm going to now pat that color on so that we're deepening or darkening the shadow lines around our base or our crock. If you have uh, bark brown, I think that was on the supply list too, you can even use a little bit of bark brown to deepen that color. And I kind of used some water with mine, so I'm going to let mine dry and maybe come back and shade that and deepen that a little bit more. While you're waiting for that part to dry, you can go ahead now and go to uh, either your flat brush 
or you might want to switch to like a number one liner if that's easier for you to work with. And the blue that I have here to me was too deep uh, of a blue, too bright of a blue. So I mixed it with a little bit of cinnamon and I'm using my number one liner here. So I'm kind of toning down that brilliant blue and kind of making more like a uh, earthy color blue because again, this is crockery. And with that color kind of toned down, you using a liner brush and or a flat brush, go ahead and paint the stripes on your vase. And that will be your last step for the vase itself. If you can't see those lines through the patterning or you didn't leave yourself a guideline, don't worry, let your vase dry and you can get your pattern back out and trace and transfer these stripe lines one more time. Very carefully make those curved lines with that blue that you've toned down. We added cinnamon to our bright, brilliant blue to kind of give us almost a little bit more of an earthy blue, not quite a navy blue. And paint your stripe lines. And on mine, I made a wider stripe in the middle and it is anchored by two smaller stripes. And if you are painting from the right to the left or the left to the right, reverse your stroke after you put it on there because you might be wider <clears throat> where you started your stroke. So I'm going left to right. And by the time I get over to the right hand side, my stroke is going to be lighter. Can you see how much wider it is here on the left and thinner it is on the right? That's why I was suggesting that you reverse your strokes and stroke over it one more time so that you get the same width or the same thickness. And the next thing I did with our medium sized flat brush, and you may need to make sure that all your leaves are dry and your roses are dry before you do this. So maybe for demonstration purposes, I'll only do the two bottom parts here for me. I'm going to have my brush clean, no paint in it, but I'm gonna have some moisture in my brush and I'm going to side load into our cinnamon color. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to kind of blush the corners of all four corners, but for demonstration purposes tonight to make sure that my other areas are still drying, I'm gonna hey, blush these. Yes. Chris, before Steven. we get too deep into the corners, can you go over the shadow underneath one more time? Yes. Same kind of technique. It's my number 10, my, my number 12 flat brush. It's the same color I'm working with now, which is again, the cinnamon. I'm side loading with that cinnamon and I am just kind of patting that color on from the table line, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as along the bottom of our crock there or our vase. If yours is not showing up dark enough, you want it a little bit darker. I did suggest that you could get your bark brown out. If you don't have that, burnt uh, umber is a good brown. A basic brown color can also be added to this if you want to deepen the color on around the crock bottom a little bit more. So mine's kind of wet, but I can come back in here with some of the beautiful bark brown and I can add some a little bit more contrast to my table line and to this coloring in here. My needs to dry a little bit more before I do too much more. But that's all I did. And can you can you uh, hold it up to the camera one more time? Yes. Thank you. Uh huh. Now what I was doing to start talking about my four corners, and I'm doing this at all four corners. But for demonstration purposes tonight, I'm only going to do these bottom two because I want you to make sure that both your rows here in this upper right hand corner area, as well as your two little stalks of fern here in your upper left hand corner, we want to make sure these are all completely dry before you touch these corners. 
So while there's nothing close to each of the two bottom corners, for demonstration purposes tonight, I'll do just these two, okay? Once you know for sure that these are completely dry, you'll do the exact same thing to your upper corners. This is my number 10 flat or my number 12 flat. This is the same cinnamon color that we've been working with. And I side loaded cinnamon on my brush. And what I'm doing is I'm patting that so that I'm kind of working um, across the corner. We're gonna make like an L shape, but we're making it bigger here in the corners and then patting that color out. So what we want is we want to draw our eyes into the design itself. So we're darkening the colors. Your eye isn't going to go off the canvas and out. If, if following some of our greenery lines, sometimes your eyes go off a canvas and away from the design. When you often have the darker corners, your eye is drawn more towards the center of your design. So that's what we're doing right here is we're just adding a little bit of that beautiful cinnamon color or raw sienna if you were working with that. And I, you can see I have it only on one half of the flat brush and I'm just patting it across that corner and then I'm bringing it up a little bit, kind of making an L shape here in the corner. If you are painting on your edges too, my edges not, are not yet painted, but you could even bring some of this if you wanted to cover your corners, you could even bring some of that color out onto the edges of your corners there as well. But for now, just worry about the top. And you can already see on mine here with these two corners already darkened, don't you notice now that the eye is going more towards the center of my design? So you'll do the same thing. I think my other corners might be dry. You'll do the same thing with the other two corners. Again, please promise me you'll make sure that yours are dry before you go on to the next step. And one more here on this corner. Blotted off some of the excess water. And I'm just bringing that color down a little bit. Kind of rubbing that in. And then the last thing we do, and I'm gonna bring my finished one up so you can see close. I want you to look in the four corners and do you see the little fly specking? There is fly specking primarily just in the four corners. It's okay if some of it falls onto your crock. It's okay if some of it falls onto your roses, but primarily we're gonna aim our toothbrush towards these four corners. The color that we are going to fly spec with is gonna be that same cinnamon color. So I'm gonna grab my palette knife here and bring a little bit more over here. And what we're going to do, if you've never fly spec before, this is a great finishing tool. It just adds a little bit more pizzazz to your painting. This is all done with a high-tech tool called a toothbrush. <laughs> we're going to dip our toothbrush in some water and then we're going to come over here to the puddle of the paint. Now I have too much water right now. I'm just going to thin that down, making that paint a little bit more fluid. Pick up a little bit more paint. And you can see here as I am kind of scrubbing on my palette, it is thinning down. And what the deal is, we're going to use your finger to flex these bristles of the brushes out over the corners of our pieces. Little tiny flecks of paint color is going to fly out. You can do it all in one hand with your finger like this. I'm hoping maybe some of you can see some of these fly specks on my palette. There's a lot of fly specks all here in this general area. So this is what we want. And the key thing is to always practice off to the side here. If you have too much water, your fly specks are going to be big. If you don't have enough water, your fly specks are going to be very, very tiny. So test on the side here. And once you feel like you have a fly speck that you like, just pick your work up and then just let it speckle here in these corners. 
and I've done, I've just did one corner. It's very random, it's very hit or miss, but it adds such a beautiful finishing touch to your artwork. Here's my second corner. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the other two corners as well. After this, the last thing to do is to sign your name. And your rustic roses should be complete or maybe complete after you finish painting them in the next couple hours or so. When you are done with your project, I do hope that you will share your work socially. Use the hashtag Let's Paint Challenge, hashtag Plaid Crafts, hashtag Make It With Michaels and Michaels Classes. So there's many, many different ways to reach out to us. All of us love to be uh, social cheerleaders for you. I love to see your work. If you're not yet a member of the Let's Paint With Plaid Facebook community, I personally invite each and every one of you to join us. It's a wonderful, warm, caring community where we teach many free classes uh, offer you moral support. You pick up so many different tips and techniques for different painting ideas and creations. And Andy Jones and myself just love to be your local cheerleader for you when you learn how to paint. Stephen White, do we have any questions this evening before we say goodbye to everyone? Nope, just um, actually there's a one here that I missed. What color are the, the uh, sprinkles? I guess they meant the fly specking. Yes, the sprinkles. I love that. It kind of looks like sprinkles. The fly specking is done with our cinnamon color. That was the same color that I used to tone the corners or to shade the corners. And um, that was also the color that was the base of our little um, vase or crock. So here's a combination look of the two before and the one tonight. I hope you all enjoyed Rustic Roses. Any other questions, Stephen? I think we're good. Okay. Well, thank you all for joining Stephen, Himana, and I tonight. I hope you all had a great time, and I cannot wait to see your Rustic Rose painting. Thank you for joining me. Oh, wait, I forgot. Preview for next Monday night. I know you all are always so curious as to who's teaching next Monday night and what that class is going to be. Guess what? I have all the answers for you. Donna Dewberry is going to be here at Plaid next week. She'll be here Monday night teaching this project here on a tavern uh, innkeeper sign from Michaels. Uh, I believe this is an Art Minds uh, wood piece. And the name of this project is Springtime Visitor because right here on the side of her tulip, she has a little dragonfly uh, coming to visit. So join us next Monday night and Donna will be here uh, sharing how to paint this springtime tulip and her, its visitor. In the meantime, though, I hope you all enjoyed Rustic Roses tonight. Thank you. Again, I'm Chris Williams, and I hope you'll join me again in another class in the future. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>